everyone. I was in a reflective and chatty kind of mood. So this seemed like the right time to do my mid-year update. I know it's not quite mid-year, it's like <laughs> we're middle of June, so another couple of weeks until official mid-year. I guess I'm just ahead of the crowds. Yeah, I just, I'm in a headspace where I am taking a pause and looking at the last six months and looking ahead at the next six months. So for me, this feels like the right time to make this video because this is where my head is at. I do make a yearly like goal setting and goal reacting video where I think a bit more about what I want to achieve and where I want to be and it's a bit more like official. This is not that, this is a more chatty, just sort of reflective kind of how things are going sort of video. For me, I do find it really helpful to always have in mind like how, how has the last period of time gone? How do I want the next period of time to go? I'm not giving myself a hard time if it hasn't gone how I thought it might do, but just kind of trying to hold where would I like to be? What would I like to do? And, you know, reflecting on if things haven't gone the way that I hoped, like, why not? And is there something that I can do? I just find that useful for me. And I'm never sort of hard on myself. I've definitely had periods of time where it hasn't gone. I mean, COVID, um, <laughs> you know, it hasn't gone to plan. But yeah, for me, it's. I think it's just about being conscious and about trying to achieve what I want to achieve and just being very like, yeah, just thoughtful. That, that's how it is for me. Anyway, before I get into it, um, I would love it if you guys commented how things are going for you. Have you had any big standout moments from the last six months? What's happened? What's going on for you? That could be work stuff or other stuff you want to share. I'd love to know. Um, it's always nice to have a chat in the comments. I've got a list, which I'm actually gonna add something to that just came into my head. And I'm just gonna be going through like bullet pointing, work stuff, life stuff, fitness, fitness stuff. My dogs are snoring. If you hear snoring, they're bored by me. <laughs> so <laughs> it just is what it is. Yeah, so I am just gonna tell you about some of the things that have happened over the last six months, successes and less successes, and how I want to move on for the next six months and how things are. Just a big update on what's going on. So I'll start with work stuff, since this is predominantly a author bookish channel, and let you know <laughs> what's been occurring, where we're at. So I have had a really amazing six months in terms of bookish things. That said, January was really, really hard. I had some problems. I'll link the video below if you want to know more. I had some problems around printing my most recent book, Captivating Kelp Forests, and it really upset me and I was very, stressed and anxious about the whole situation. My husband was really helpful in kind of saying, okay, this is how you solve it. And trying to be very like, yeah, just logical about, okay, like this is really hard, but look, this is your plan and it will be fine because this plan will work. And, and it did, everything did work out in the end, but it was really stressful and I was really panicked about not having, sorry, shift around in my chair not having enough books for the launch. And, you know, I didn't want to disappoint anyone. And so January in, in what, yeah, in that respect was really, really stressful, but it did work out, it did resolve. And in February, we launched the book with the most incredible book launch at the Isle of Wight Story Festival. I'm just, part of this video, I want to recognize that I, I have so much gratitude for the opportunities that I have. And I don't want any of this to come off as any kind of like, I'm just so successful, because <laughs> A, I'm not, and B, it's more about just recognising that I, I understand that I'm fortunate and I want to take those opportunities I'm lucky enough to have and try and sort of make something of it. But yeah, that book launch, you know, being able to be part of an event like that with top authors and just run the most amazing event with fantastic kids. We did this beautiful workshop and it just filled the soul. You know, it was it was an amazing weekend. And I'm so lucky that because of the association with Natural England who sponsor this series, the Discovering Marine and Coastal Habitats series, that obviously they, as like a countrywide organization, have the kudos that I don't as a little indie author 
to be able to sort of ha create these opportunities that I can be part of. So I'm really, really grateful. It was an amazing launch. Um, I just loved it. And then following that, I actually made a video, um, which I'll link below as well, kind of talking about, wow, the last few weeks, where we launched the book and then we went into a world book week where I did a whole load of school visits, which were just amazing. And then I was a finalist in an award. I didn't win it. Um, I was, yeah, finalist, um, didn't place as like runner up or winner or anything, but had just a lovely night celebrating loads of businesses and was really grateful to be a finalist. How exciting is that for, for being a businesswoman as well, which, yeah, it was, it was really cool, really special. That was the Kent Women in Business Awards. And I was just at the end of that week was just like, like pinch me. This is just because things have been really tough since the pandemic. And this was the first time I really felt like I was successful and that things were just going really, really positively. And it wasn't like, well, this is good, but this is hard. And you know, it was just like, this is amazing. So I did that and that was really cool. And then, so from there, book wise, I did another couple of school visits. I've done a few over the year. They've just been brilliant, every single one, whether that's an assembly or a whole school thing, I've done some primary schools, I've done some um, SEN, like special educational needs schools, like secondary, and it's just, it's just been brilliant. It's, I'm so grateful for these schools that want to work with me and where it just goes so well, and we've got sort of future plans with some of them, and it's just like the best job in the world. I'm so lucky to get to do something for my job that's so enjoyable it is hard work but it's like I did one I did a school visit on Friday and I'm still tired but it was amazing I'm filming this on Tuesday <laughs> had some other stuff on so um but yeah it was it's just it's just been great working with schools has been amazing and then I went to the Cornish Seaweed Festival I vlogged that so I'll link that below as well if you want to look and that was with Natural England. I was running an event with them. I also had a stall where I was selling books all day. And I managed to create some relationships through networking with a couple of businesses to stock my books and sell them. So just the whole thing was just, I, I remember calling my husband and being like, I'm having a lovely time. Like number one, this is lovely. Number two, the event was really nice. Number three, I've actually sold quite a lot of books. And number four, I've got new stockists. Like this is just so, great and I'm there with friends as well it was just it was beautiful and the location Marizion if you're in the UK and you're able to get down to Cornwall it is just sensationally beautiful just go go and have a look if you can it's so amazing so yeah that was incredible as well had an amazing weekend doing that and so work-wise I'm sort of in that position where I'm looking at everything that we've achieved um, with the book and all of the school stuff and just everything so some of the selling events I've done as well, just everything feeling so amazing is, it's really nice to feel that way. And then coming up and sort of in the background of all of this over the last maybe two months, um, I've got one, maybe two projects going forward with Natural England, which is super exciting. It's not like signed off and planned out yet so I'm at that position where I don't quite know exactly when the chunks of work are going to happen and how to like set my time up around that so it would be really good when I've got some certainty around that but yeah more projects I'm also working on a new story as well as editing an old one that I, I might develop like my own personal projects rather than the Natural England series so yeah loads of stuff going on and right now I just can't tell you like what's going to be first and what's going to be when and when I'm going to be busy and how because I just don't know and that's part of why this does feel like a pause I just did my last school visit of the year on Friday I can't imagine I'm going to have any more because there's only six weeks left of term I think could happen um but it just feels like right so that bit's done <laughs> and then kind of thinking right and then how is the next bit going to look so yeah, really exciting and really positive and I am very, very grateful. So then from there, I wanted to talk about two trips that we got to go on as a family that I feel super grateful to have been able to do and that were just really lovely things to do together. If you've watched my channel for a while, you'll know that I do like to travel when I can and that I am really grateful for the opportunity to be able to show my children 
you know, new experiences, new parts of the world where I can. We went to Madeira. Again, there's a vlog. I'll, I'll stick loads of links. We went to Madeira, which um, my uh, in-laws have got a timeshare. So it's amazing that we have the opportunity to go to such an amazing place. We wouldn't otherwise. We had a really lovely family holiday with um, all of my in-laws. So um, my husband's parents and his sister and her family. And it was really lovely in lots and lots of ways. But one of the things for me was I got to do two dives and I don't dive very much scuba diving and I love scuba diving so it was so nice to do and I, I felt like I got the bug again not in the way that I'm going to do lots of it because I don't have time but just that I was I just loved it it was it was brilliant and if the opportunity arises I will definitely take it but also I got to take my daughter snorkeling it was like snorkeling with dolphins but I knew that we were unlikely to get in the water with the dolphins that we would see them but we probably wouldn't get in because there's a lot of rules around what species you can swim with but so yeah we didn't swim with them but for her like seeing her experience of seeing under the sea for the first time through a mask and her just, yeah, seeing it so, and remembering my own experiences. It was really, really special for me. Um, and I think she really loved it and would like to do more. And that potentially leads on to a future of like snorkeling and diving with her, which is is amazing. It's nice to have shared interests with your kids. And it just, yeah, it was, it was really super special. There's a video that I've put on like shorts and TikTok and stuff of me holding her hand and pulling her out to sea. And I just, it's really special to me to see me and you can see me like reassuring her as well. Yeah, it's a, I'm really glad I captured that moment. It's things like that that make me so grateful to have social media. So yeah, that was really special. And then um, we recently went to Paris for the weekend. Well, France, Northern France, we spent a day in Paris for mine and my husband's 40th. So I turned 40 in May and he turned 40 on Saturday <laughs> in June. And we decided to take a family trip to just the five of us celebrate. And we chose Paris because my son wanted to go. And it was like, it was really busy, I have to say. We probably overdid it, but it was fun. And there's a lot of really nice memories. I didn't film it because I decided I wanted to just be super present. And, um, yeah, it was it was a really nice time. We haven't got anything planned for the rest of the year, but I think we'll probably go on some weekends away. Those were like our big trips. But yeah, they were really, really lovely and I'm really grateful and really nice like memories to carry us through the rest of the year. So that was nice. The next thing on my list, these are in no specific order, by the way, it's just what I wrote them down as, was to sort of talk a bit about reading. I feel like I was in kind of a reading slump at the beginning of the year. I wasn't super into it and I feel like I really am now. I've read a few books that I really enjoyed that I just like devoured and I've recently rediscovered the library. <laughs> I know that's going to sound ridiculous but I tend to take the kids to the library and I don't get books out myself very much because I'm prone to not returning them on time and so I tend to like buy books from the charity shop or like buy them new but it depends tend to buy fiction from the charity shops and non-fiction to keep, you know, sort of. And yeah, I feel like I've sort of just got into walking into the library and going, well, what do I fancy? And I'm really enjoying it. So it's nice to, yeah, just be in that and like getting into fiction a bit. I'm not reading tons of stuff, but I'm just really enjoying it. So I just wanted to kind of say that that was nice. I find it hard to find time to read but actually, as I will come on to, I, I'm going to have some more time and I definitely want to make some time to read more. So, yeah, and I, I found some spaces in my life where I'm able to sit and just read a little bit. And I just enjoyed getting to do that. So it's been really nice. Maybe I'll do more reading, like reading wrap ups or reading vlogs on this channel. Let me know if you'd like to see that, because I've been doing a lot less than I used to. Um, so, yeah, that was nice. <laughs> the next thing on my list was my walk <laughs> um so I don't know how much I talked about this on YouTube actually uh, yeah I must have mentioned it but I did the moonwalk link the moonwalk below in case you'd like to do it it's a half marathon or full marathon walk overnight in London there are other like locations and um options if you want to take a look uh, we did the full marathon, so there was a team of four of us, 
And it definitely was a lot. I trained really hard for it, not as hard as potentially I might have done, but I was going in line with training for doing my second down in karate. So I was like, I don't have to train quite as hard as you might have to if you weren't doing anything else. Cause I knew that like my fitness and my strength and stuff would be okay. So um, yeah, the, the tricky thing with training for something of that length is the time. And having to go on like long training walks at the weekend when we've got family stuff and that, I've definitely over the last six months done too much in evenings and weekends, like no question about it. And as I say, I'll come on to it, but I, I can't keep doing it. It's been an incredible six months with a lot of really positive things, as I've said, and achievements, but I can't, for many, many reasons, <laughs> you know, I can't, I just can't keep doing it. Um, but yeah, there was a lot involved in doing that and it was alongside loads of other stuff happening. So anyway, it was an amazing event. It was brutal. It's really hard. And I was very surprised when I finished it how physically exhausted I was. It was really challenging. And to see the people struggling with it as well, it was like, wow, this like genuinely is really difficult. Um, one member of our team didn't finish. She had a really bad, bad back. And so she stopped at 15 miles because she was like, I just can't. Um, which I really felt for her, but she did amazing. She was in so much pain and to keep going through that for as long as she did was amazing. So our team of four, we had three finishers. We raised uh, just over two and a half grand for breast cancer for the charity Walk the Walk, who like give grants for charity, uh, for the breast cancer related um, things. So really proud of it in terms of like the physical achievement but also proud of it in terms of raising money and just doing a really good thing we all as a team know people who have either recovered from or who are living with breast cancer so it felt really poignant to do it a positive thing to do it and yeah I'm very proud of doing it and glad that I did but I'm also glad that it's done <laughs> and I don't think I would do it again in a rush I I feel like it was amazing that I did that thing <laughs> but now I've done it I don't need to do it again um so yeah there was that and then I had my karate grading on Saturday just gone um for my second dan um which is a target I'd set myself this year to give it a go and try and pass <laughs> doing it what three weeks after a marathon walk was not my smartest move physically I'm still kind of struggling I'm still quite achy I had to go and have a sports massage I've had to like stretch loads I've had to buy a foam roller because after the marathon I was just like marathon walk I have to caveat I didn't run it I was just like this hurts this really really hurts I struggled to stand up for a long time so my legs get really like stiff and sore so I wasn't at my best I would say in that respect I also had been doing a lot was really tired we our dog wasn't very well there was a whole load of stuff wasn't at my best I don't know if the result would have been any different if I had been at my best I don't feel disappointed in myself that I didn't like perform as well as I'm able because you can only turn up on the day with what you have and so I um I got kata only which is where I passed my basics and my sparring, but I have to go back and redo my kata, which is fine. So I'm regrading in June, but I'm only doing that bit. So it's not like I've got to go and redo it all. I just have to do the bit that wasn't up to scratch. And it was fair. It wasn't up to scratch. I definitely could do better. So six months of just running through my katas and making sure they're really good. And I'll go and um, hopefully pass on that one. But again, training has been a lot. So up until this year, I trained once a week, just, you know, do some physical fitness stuff, that was enough, wasn't expecting to kind of get any better at it necessarily, just like enjoy it, an exercise class once a week. As soon as I decided I was going to grade, I had to up that, so I was training twice a week, which alongside everything else that I do, work stuff, teaching I haven't talked about on here, I made a video about supply teaching last week, but you know, my sort of obligations around going and doing some teaching here and there, um, just everything. I was out a lot, almost every evening, some weeks. We had a lot of things on at weekends that we were going to. It's just been a lot. And like, if you bear in mind, I spent uh, three days on the Isle of Wight and I spent the same, uh, the Cornish Seaweed Festival, you know, so those were over a couple of weekends. There's been 
you know, book events and there's been, there's been like just a lot on and then, yeah, to be training twice a week as well, as well as going out on long walks. It has just been a lot of time commitment to a lot of things on my part, all at the same, uh, same time, which was just bananas. I knew I was doing it. I knew I could do it, but I don't, yeah, it was just, it was a lot. It was, <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. And in amongst all of that mix of stuff, we got a new dog. I saw this dog on a local charity, like dog rehoming uh, thing, Facebook thing, or Instagram, whatever, and was like, oh, and now I'm often like that. I do follow a lot of local dog charities and I do, I send my husband screenshots all the time going, we can have this dog. And he's like, no, we don't need another dog. There was something about this dog. I was just, I just, she was my dog. I couldn't describe it any other way, but I was like, she, she's mine. It's the first time for all of the dogs that I've looked at since we got our, our first dog. So Dolly, who is 12 now, where I've been like, let's get a second dog. So many dogs I've been like, we could have this dog. And I've never pursued it. And this one, I actually like phoned them and got more information and started to go through the process. And, and once I'd got a bit more information about her, I was like, she is a really good fit for us and spoke to my husband about it and was like look I, I really think that this is a good point because Dolly is 12 and she she'd really slowed down we didn't really see her very much she'd just be asleep somewhere and the days of her kind of hanging around us and being part of family life were just gone and I, I felt sad that she didn't seem to have the quality of life that she did have she had her walks you know she'd get up and have her 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 lunch and her dinner and stuff but she was just not you know just yeah like sleeping all the time and I said you know if we get a younger dog then that would be hopefully not annoying for her hopefully more fun and that we also can sort of train up a new dog so that at the point where we lose Dolly we've got a dog that is like Dolly has helped us train it felt like a good time to do it and we we kept sort of looking into it and thinking about it and um yeah, we got her, is <laughs> the long and the short of it. And I would say the first two weeks, I was worried it had been the wrong mistake, uh, the, yeah, the wrong decision, that's the word. The two dogs didn't seem to get on very well. Dolly was not keen. But I think that was all like um, establishing their position in the household and it settled really quickly. But initially I was like, oh no, you know, I didn't want to do anything negative for Dolly. Dolly comes first. And I was like, if this doesn't work out, then we have to think about Dolly's welfare and, you know, see if, if perhaps, like, we could have given Lucy back. Um, we wouldn't want to do that, but it's all about what's, rest, what's best for the animals. But, I mean, right now, they're asleep on top of each other. They're, they hang out. Dolly's definitely perked up. Um, Lucy tries to play with her. Dolly, like, <laughs> Dolly has the best eye roll. They're good. And Lucy hangs out with us in a way that Dolly doesn't anymore. And that's been really nice having more of like a family dog that's sort of involved. And as soon as the kids get up, they want to go and see the dog. It's so nice. And it has made them spend more time with Dolly as a result, you know. So I just think, yeah, it's been it's been a good thing. Lucy's really naughty. She's pain in the backside, but she's very funny. And we do love her. She is a lurcher. She's a three-legged lurcher. She's very silly. It's just, it was, it was the right thing to do, I think. <laughs> Maybe not when we, when like all these other things were happening. But yeah, she's definitely brought a positive to our household. So that's like how my six months have, have gone. And now that the karate grading is done, that was like my last thing in a whole row of stuff. We have got a few busy weekends with like family things coming up, but I feel my work things and like my personal commitments are done. And that's why I'm in this place to make this video. And right now I'm looking ahead and I'm thinking, I just need to, to stop. <laughs> I will only be training at karate once a week, maybe twice a week in like the month or two months before the grading. But certainly right now, in fact, I haven't gone at all this week. I'm not going to. Um, so just taking a step back on the karate training. I'm obviously not walking. Book stuff, I want to spend more time at home, writing, creating. I think I want the balance between teaching and author visits to change and do more author visits. So yeah, I'm spending more time working on my, my writing type stuff. I definitely just want a bit more time. So I just want to slow down. That's, that's kind of how I feel about it. 
And that's how it should look, really. September to December is not a busy time in the author visit schedule. I'm anticipating having new work for Natural England and just being able to really focus on that and massage my supply work around that situation and just make it work. And I feel like I've had... Uh, the the book launch and the seaweed festival and some of the other things that have just been like incredible but like big big commitments in terms of prep and actually doing the thing and whatever just like don't want to do anything big that's I think how to explain it I just want to do like you know the usual things and sorry my uh, memory card was full I've just had to make some space where was I um yeah so the next six months. I very much have in mind that I want to stop doing the things that are about me, you know, because there's just been a lot that happens to have fallen into that space of time. And obviously I realise I've sat here and gone like, we've done this amazing thing and I've achieved this and that's, you know, and it has been brilliant, but that comes at a cost and the cost is how much time I've had to spend focusing on things that are about me and not about the family or community or like whatever. So I am very mindful of the fact that I really need to change tack, change pace now. And um, I'm really looking forward to that. So the next six months are going to be about arranging some lovely things to do with the family, whether that's during summer holidays or some of the weekends, some more like quiet time at home, a lot more evenings in. I'm not gonna be doing as much karate training. I, once a week, I'm not doing those long walks. Um, I work-wise, hopefully the balance should be a wee bit better than it has been. Um, just sort of more about the family unit. And I think one of my goals this year was that <laughs> I was going to do that. I just really haven't. I've had to kind of go, I've got all this stuff on and I need to focus on this while trying to like do the things with the family and like, um, you know, take the kids where they need to be and make sure I'm at the things and obviously work from home. So a lot of the daytime stuff is me, like if there's something at the school or whatever, but evenings and weekends, I have not been as present as I want. And silly things as well, like sitting and reading or doing some sewing, chilling out, watching films, you know, and, and some of the slower activities with the kids. Um, it's been really nice lately spending some time out in the garden together and like we went to the beach and that was nice, you know, just, yeah, it needs to be about that. And I'm really conscious that that's how I want to spend the next six months. That I'm very grateful for the last six months equally just mentally and physically as well as just like it's the right thing to do <laughs> um I I you know I really should as well like for myself as much as for anyone else so um yeah it's it's going to be now a change of pace it's going to be enjoy the summer with my family which I have to put uh, writing stuff on the back burner because I'm the person that does like the day-to-day because -day my husband's at work and childcare is sort of limited. So I never really know exactly how much I'm going to be able to do. So I kind of have to assume that I'm predominantly with the kids and plan some lovely stuff. So there'll be, we've already got a few things, um, but there'll be some more just like, you know, day trips, a couple of weekends away, some like homey activities. So lots of bits we've been talking about doing. And yeah, and then in the new term, just looking at sort of being here a lot more than I have been. And I'm really looking forward to it. And I, you know, I do slightly feel bad about not being around. It has just been the way that it's it's fell. Um, and, but I, I don't want to plan for that anymore. And over the next like next year as well, there's nothing coming up that will take me away, like as I say, evenings and weekends, as much as this last period of time has. So while it's been brilliant, I am looking forward to a long period of time where my focus can be more on here. And you know, we've, we're still doing like the house renovations and stuff. And, but yeah, I just, I want to be in my home with my family doing stuff and not feeling quite so shattered and like sort of mentally not present because I'm so busy doing work stuff or personal stuff. 
I want to be more kind of here and involved than I have been. So, so yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm in that position of sort of reflecting, go, okay, that was amazing. And I'm really grateful for it. But now, now let's, let's change pace. It's, it's the right thing to do. It's the right time to do it. And I'm really looking forward to it. So that's, that's where I'm at. Let me know in the comments how things have been for you, what you've been up to. How are you with like balance? Because I feel like I'm all or nothing. I'm either 100 miles an hour or I've got nothing on. <laughs> it's just always the way. And I really want for the next like 18 months for it just to be a bit smoother because that would be so much easier to handle. Yeah, so that that's the plan. And um, yeah. So please hit like if you have enjoyed. Thank you for watching this long if you've made it all the way to the end. I always appreciate you guys. I appreciate the time you spend watching my videos. I appreciate hearing from you. Um, you know, follow me on other social media if you'd like to. I'm pretty active on Instagram, I would say, of all of the things. TikTok kind of, but yeah, Instagram's the main one if you want to come and hang out on there. The links are all below. And I tend to on Instagram, sorry, I am rambly today. On Instagram is where I put like all my stories so you can see like what I'm up to and you know, a bit more sort of day to day if you're interested. Yeah, so that is the end. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Um, I'll see you all soon for another video. Let me know if there's anything that you'd like me to make. I always have a list. Um, but yeah, I'll see you next week for another video, Monday's writing sprints. Have a lovely week. Take care.